Yeah, why? Because Alif just uh, present his part. So maybe we can just start first and then wait. He reach home and then let him present. Okay. So okay. can start now. Uh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> so um. Yeah. Uh, wait, I can get Alias going to brief something first and then only we start. Okay. Alia, are you saying something? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, I start. Mm. Uh, dengar tak? Okay, okay. Dengar, dengar. Yeah, uh, slide, slide nampak? Nampak. nampak. Okay, sorry eh. Okay, before kita start, kita punya uh, pre-test. So, kita recap baliklah day one punya schedule untuk slot tu which is kita akan start lepas after lunch break. So, untuk ni kita akan ada lesson 1 hour 30 minit and then kita akan pergi game 30 minit. So, yang untuk lesson ni kita akan buat dekat Google Meet and then untuk game kita akan pergi ke Discord. So, untuk Discord group Uh, semua jelaskan untuk first person masuk discord group 1, second person masuk discord group 2 and so on lah. Ikut senarai nama yang this way. So uh, untuk credit score, Junhao akan terangkan. Okay, so before starting the slot 2 presentation, I will now sharing the credit score system. Can everyone see the slide? Yes. Okay. So for this credit score system, it will be uh, in two parts, one is the group games and one is the individual games. So for the slot two, uh, group games is finding resources, right? Since the survival wilderness will be the uh, offline game, so and this finding resources will be the group game. Is that correct? Hello? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so for after you guys playing the games, then you uh for each uh, group facilitators can record the points here. Then for this point, we'll be adding with the total individual point and get the total group points. Then for the group with the highest total group point will be the winner. Yeah, so that's all. You guys have any questions? No, so far. All right. So that's uh, all. Okay, oh, untuk purpose kita punya today, today test run untuk korang uh, biasakanlah untuk actual program nanti sebab actual program nanti kita akan berlangsung selama 2 hours. So uh, untuk hari ni kita akan take 2 hours untuk korang handle macam the actual program. So untuk kali ni uh, korang bayangkan kita orang ni participant and Uh, present to participant and also nanti untuk game pun handle macam uh, kita semua ni uh, adalah participant. So okay. itu I think itu saja. So boleh start lah. Good luck. Okay, thank you.
Okay, just start the session. Who will start the presentation and all? Um, Sarah, you are muted. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. I'll start. Give me a second. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so hi everyone, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today we will go through a long day, which is we will be playing a lot of games and you will be learning a few uh, things that you might not know. So today's lesson will be about food and shelter. And you have your beautiful sisters and your handsome brothers here. So if you guys have any question, you can just ask us about anything you want to ask um, when we when we presenting or maybe after the session. So for today, we have four, uh, four section which is a food, water, fire, and shelter. But don't worry, guys. At the end of the session, we will have an amazing game for you guys to play. Uh, I hope that you guys will not fall asleep. And stay awake, stay energetic, and um, please uh, stay focused, okay? So we will start with um, uh, the, the first the first present presenter, which is Mahyok Chen for food. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to introduce some food sources that you can get in the wild. During this session, you will learn about where to get the food source in the wild with me. And a serious... Um, sorry, are you going to share the slide? I, I thought Tenika will present. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. uh, you have slide with you, right? SG2. Uh, uh, Maybe uh, someone I, uh, will be present? Can slide. Uh, I present. I present. With what? Uh, actually, there are some, some thing. Uh, okay, maybe you guys have to. If you want, you can present yourself the slides, or if you don't want, you can just give all the slides to uh, technical. So, which one you guys prefer? Maybe just let technical to have a copy of the slide. Unless any other presenter requests, if not, the technical just present. Okay. Uh, Techno, Aish and Fahana, SG2, they, they want you guys to help present. Uh, Yokchen, can you send the link to here first, then we try to have some practice. Okay. Um, while waiting, I just want to ask Anaba later, do you want to test your Kahoot, the back up game? Chen, uh the googling is uh yeah need access. Process mm kumbaru, -hmm. yes too. Ah okay. <laughs>
Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to introduce some food sources that you can get in the world. In the world. During this session, you will learn about where to get the food source in the well in, in the wild. And a serious advice for you guys: uh, do not hunt unless you are a professional. Firstly, MRE. MRE means the meal is ready to eat. Don't need to cook, but the included beverage has to mix with water to drink. Before starting your trip into the wilderness, you can prepare some MREs inside your bag for a spare food. The MRE is not recommended for a long-term diet because it has high calories and low fibers that may cause constipation. Apart from that, you can try to try the edible plants or edible fruits. What I want to highlight here is you must know what you are eating. This is because any toxic plants may kill you. You better to bring a local field guide along your trip so that you can follow the guides to find the edible plants or fruits. If there are no plants that you know and without any field guide, you can apply the universal edibility test on an unknown plant. The test must be carried out step by step properly. If any ill effects occur at any step, you must stop the testing. In order to ensure the edibility test, uh, edibility result of the certain plant part or to prevent the harmful interaction with other food, you are not allowed to eat or drink before and during the test, except purify water. And I have a question here. Do you willing to test? So, uh, I won't test be it because I'm scared of dying. Everyone can respond. You can comment in the chat box also. Okay. By the way, I don't suggest you taste whatever you do not know. If there is a pond or a river surrounding, fishing by using trout line is a way to get food. The setup is the setup of a trout line is shown as the figure at the right side. You may uh you can to make the trot line, you need a cord or line clips, swivels, hooks, and baits. If you do not have a have clips, you can make a note to fix the hook. This method is easily be retrieved, but the strong wind and big fish can drag it around. Some simple traps also can be tried to set, such as fish trap, a bird trap and a deep hole trap. If you are interested of the process of setting the traps, you can scan the QR codes to access to the YouTube links. Before you left, you should remove the traps, avoid to murder other uh, innocents. But right now, I'm going to simply explain the steps of setting these three traps. Fish trap is very easy to set up. You can get the branches from the trees or stones uh, at the riverbank uh, and place them in a M shape near the coastal line. The head is like a funnel shape. The fish will swim into and unable to get up. Compared to the fish trap, the bird trap and the deep hole trap are more difficult to make. There are six steps to set up a bird trap. Firstly, pitch two small pieces of wood on the surface and link up with another piece of wood. The second step is to pitch a narrow pole in front 
of the barrier and a further pole behind it. Then one end of a rubber band bite on the pole behind the barrier and tie a small stick by another end of the rubber band. Stretch over the barrier, fix the end of uh, the small stick on the rubber band with a uh, wood as a support attached on the pole in front. A string is made one end a loop circle, then note, note the other end on the rubber band. Last, uh, put some base around the, around the loop circle. So uh, this is the this is the method to set a bird trap. How do you think the trap for you, is it easy to set up? I think it's easy when watching the video, but I don't know when actually do. Maybe my brain knows to do, but my hands do not. Okay, uh, for the deep hole trap, first step, first step is to size up. Uh, is to size up the area of the deep hole trap. You want to make a dig and dig it. it. Find a wood, not too hard. Bend it between two small pieces of wood to make the frame of a cover. Uh, then add some wood to fill the gap and also some leaves or grass for pretending. In front the commercial side, make a barrier like previously the one we do for a trap, a shorter stick bunch into the wall inside the hole, a longer stick attached to the shorter stick and the outside barrier, and then use a longer and thicker branch to support the cover. So if there is a weight touch the stick, will fall into the hole. We also need some base to trick the small animals. The best are uh, placed like the picture. All right, this is the method to make a simple deep hole track. Here is the summary about what I mentioned just now. It's on for Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Mahyak Chen. What a what um um very uh so many informations and input uh which uh, stated on the slide. And we learn how to, we learn about um, R, R, MRE, we learn about fishing using trot lines, hooks, cleats, which is much more easier, which is, uh, we learn about types of traps. And I hope that you guys can gain a f uh, much of few information from that. And um, I would like to ask uh, Esther, Esther, uh, what is um, uh, MRE? What is MRE from the slide that Mahyok Chan mentioned just now? Meal ready to eat. Yes, good. Um, that means that Esther pay uh, attention from what Mahyok Chan mentioned just now. Okay, so without further ado, let's uh, move on to Water by Zi Shen. Uh, oh, saya, saya ada update, so saya, saya present myself. Okay. Okay, hi everyone. Okay, now I will... I'll share about the topic water source. Okay, before starting, we all are now getting lost or stranded in the wild is something that happens to just about anyone. Whether you are a day hiker, tourist, or experienced outdoor man, 
everyone is subject to circumstance beyond their control. Therefore, understanding the importance of water in wild is will be a key to our survival in any situation. Okay, so what is the importance of water in the wild? First, to maintain our good health. So we know our human body needs a minimum of two quarts of water per day. So if you are lost in the wild, chances you chances are you'll be exerting yourself and you may be in a hot or cold environment. Both of these factors means you should drink more than the minimum amount. So, but um, someone will think that a cold environment might pose less of risk, but that's not the case. So we may prospect less, but we will lose water through our skin because of the dry air. So we should also drink more water if we are in heavy winds. Okay, next. As I told before, our body is about two thirds water, uh, two -thirds water and uses it to help our blood circulation process food and as this are other internal process. So if we use more water than we take in, we'll be begin to suffer from dehydration. So what is the meaning of dehydration? The meaning of dehydration is the loss or removal of water from something like plant or our human body. So with the civil dehydration, we'll, uh, our cell will shrink and circulation stop, then causing a lack of oxygen flow to uh, our body's, our, our muscle. So always remember, dehydration can start as soon as six hours of not having water. And more than a full day without water is cause of serious concern. So our human body can only live about three days without drinking water. Okay, now uh, we understand the importance of water. It should be pretty clear that our shelter should be as close to a water source as possible. So I'll talk about the so now we'll talk about the ways to find water source. Okay, finding water is uh finding water to drink is one of the most basic survival skill that we must learn. So now I have a question: What is the method to find water source? Okay, you you, you all can write it in the chat box if you know. Okay, so I will go through with this form, which is rain, river, lake, stream, morning dew and last, fruit and vegeta vegetation. Okay, first I'll talk about the rain. Okay, rain is the quickest access to a clean water source. So we, um, its advantage is this is the simplest and safest water source of all. This is because it has the lowest risk of bacterial infection. So we can use bottle, can or rain jacket to collect water. Unfortunately, it's this advantage is be uh, unpredict unpredictable. We can't predict when it, it when it will rain. Okay, next is river, lake, and stream. So this is the most obvious source of water in the wild. So we must look for clear flowing water to ensure bacteria hasn't built up. So we can look for flying birds in early morning or evening as they will typically fly toward body of water. While this may be the most common source of water, they are also the most susceptible to contamination. So always remember, never drink from this source without filtering, treating, or boiling it first. Okay, beside rain, river, lake, and stream, we can collect water from morning dew and look at this picture. This is the what I thought uh, what I say morning dew. Okay, how how we collect? We can collect by uh, we can collect water from morning dew by trying uh tying a clean coat or towel 
around our ankles and walk before sunrise through tall glass or meadow. Remember, we must avoid the poisonous plant along the way. And next, we can collect the water from the coat by squishing it into a container. So we will have to do this quite often if, if we want to collect enough water to last throughout the day. And these primitive scales are a great option for areas where there are not much rainfall. And last but not least, we can collect water by fruit and vegetation. Okay, uh, fruit, vegetable, and plant contain a lot of water. For example, coconut. Coconut is such a, an excellent source of hydration, which is considered a survival food. We can use this method of collecting food for water when we are trying to survive in a tropical environment. So if so it is useful if we are learn more about the edible edible plants and fruit around our area and know exactly how to prepare them for food consumption. But we must remember that some plants while full of water can also cause massive intestinal issue. So in, co in conclusion, there are a lot of wilderness survival skills to help us find water source in the wild. We just have to know where to look. The ability to find water outdoor is an essential wilderness survival skill we need to master. So after finding a water source, knowing how to purify the water we've, we have collected is the second most important skill to have. So remember, we are not we are not the only one looking for the water out there. And I will go uh, I will go through to find the way to purify water by boiling, distillation, and sedimentation. Okay, first, boiling water is one of the best wilderness water purification method. Boiling water. Boiling clear water is the most efficient sea water way to make it safe to drink. Most bacteria and microorganisms can't survive in boiling water and they will likely die off during the heating process. So, boiling water can be done over a campfire or stove in a metal, ceramic, or glass container. Uh, if there is no fireproof container is available. Heat rock for 30 minutes in the fire and place them in our container of water. And next is distillation. Okay, this method of purifying water in the wild is particularly useful in tropical setting. Often we when we have uh, we find fresh water in tropical setting, it may contain high level of sodium and minerals. So drinking this water may cause us to become even more dehydrated. And one way to separate the water from its salt and mineral is to distill it. But uh, its disadvantage is the process is complicated. We require some items that might not be accessible in the wild, such as Container, small container, and cover. Okay, and next is, and last, sedimentation. So, it might seem like a no brainer when discovering how to filter water in a well, but this method often goes overlooked. When faced with extremely murky water, sedimentation is a great way to deal with the excess of unwater particle. So we can simply by leaving our water stagnant for an extended period and this will force all the particle to sink to the bottom leaving the clean water at the top. So we must remember when we take the clean water from the top we must not 
to disturb the water as much as possible or it could become mixed again. And that's all from me. Thanks for listening. Okay, thank you so much, Zixian, for the amazing presentation about water just now, which have lots of new things that we learned. So let's recap. We learned about the importance of water, the sources of water, collect water from the morning dew, and way to purify water, which a lot a lots of things that uh, Zixian uh, explained just now. And I hope that you guys don't be shy to ask any question. If you have any, just straight away unmute, unmute your mic or just ask in the chat box, okay? So without wasting any time, we can proceed with uh, FIRE. will be presented by Saidi Alif. <laughs> Hello, beautiful humans. So, uh, this is, this is uh, uh, not sure. So, hands and big old brother. Anyway, so my name is Said Alif, and Okay, so very important one, of course, definitely. Uh, my chat screen test. Am I uh, with my PowerPoint clean and clear enough to hear and see? Somebody tell me, just scream it in my face. Come on, let me hear you out. Hey, can you hear me? Can. Okay, thank you. God, I was freaking out. All right, so um, welcome a bit to the Fire Nation. <laughs> I mean, if you ever, oh, God damn it. Okay, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, yeah, as I was saying, if you ever watch uh, Avatar, The Legend of Aang, you know, Nickelodeon stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, here, first and foremost, oh, Oh my god. So is there any backup plan? Maybe we wait here for a while. What if this happens in the real camp? What will you guys do? Yeah, ju just wait for a few minutes and then if cannot, then we just let another person do first and then get back to him later when he comes back. Okay. Are you okay, Ali? Hey, hey Ali. so uh, <laughs> am I uh, back? Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> am I here? Cool, thank you. I mean, I don't know, you know, uh, fucking 2020. Hold up, okay, I'm gonna just get back to it very quick. Um, yo, yo, yo. Ali, actually, we're recording the session. Oh no, I'm so dead. Winter. Okay, so PowerPoint. And we're back. Could you see? Ken, Ken. Uh, okay, thank you. Because, you know, all I can see right now is my PowerPoint, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to yeah, look at that. Google me. Uh, interface. So we're back uh, with the fire. So fire, uh, obviously the most powerful and most important of uh, the primitive technologies, you know, it unlocked all sorts of potentials for us on every level. Now, the good news is that 
Uh, okay. You don't have to go through this whole ridiculously wholesome uh, reading and swell it down your throat to be able to make fire for yourself in the middle of the woods or uh, nowhere. So let's just hop into the next slide. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, or well, perhaps should I say kids or boys and girls, that would have made more sense, right? So the first one that you got to bear in your mind and I uh, want to keep for as long as possible is that fire requires just three things. So to begin with, we got oxygen on top of the pyramid. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to call it pyramid, all right? It's obviously triangle. And then you got uh, moving down to the left, we got fuel. And last but not least, followed by heat. So the oxygen is obviously already present in the air, while the fuel can be of any combination of things that'll actually catch flame and hold that energy. So, uh, which means it can be wood, it could be dunk, and also grasses perhaps. So what we really need to focus on then here is the heat. So how is the heat generated and where does it come from? So the most primitive and ancestral approaches to fire rely upon mainly friction to generate heat. Now, so the first thing that you need to do if you're gonna start a fire from scratch is to find a sharp edge. So if you have a knife, you know, that's a no-brainer, you know, just use it. Don't make your life any more harder, please. But if you don't, say you 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 you're in a survival situation, you know, you uh, join a cam, definitely not a virtual, wait, what? Oh yeah, definitely not a virtual one like this. You know, you got lost or anything. So the option is that you would have to create that sharp edge somehow. And one of the possible ways for you to do that is by banging two rocks, as you could see on the left hand side of the screen. Okay, so uh, this pair of hands of uh, some stranger banging two rocks together to produce that sharp, durable edge. And once you have that, you could use that sharp edge to cut the pieces of wood and most importantly, modify their shape to suit them to make the fire. And so you see, there are two most common ways of making a primitive fire, which are firstly, uh, it's called the hand drill and followed by that is the bow drill. So um, the way you build your fire is largely influenced by what you're trying to accomplish. Now, if you take a burning tinder bundle, put it on the ground and slowly begin to lay increasing sizes of wood on top of it, it naturally forms a teepee, as you could see again on the uh, left hand side of the screen. So on the other hand, if you want a fire for a light, for instance, you want instead a large flame. So uh, what you're gonna do is that you would have like woods organized in such a way that there's a lot of air between it. And so that many air between those woods would not only allow for what we call as introduction of a lot of oxygen, but also these many fires uh, I mean woods, I'm sorry, will burn up very extremely quickly and that will generate a lot of heat and consequently a lot of light. And uh, yeah, so uh, voila. And in most situations, when you want an, uh, a fire, right? Obviously, so if you want a fire for cooking, what you want um, for yourself is a good bed of coals. And you see, you'll find the best way to build this type of fire is by using the parallel log method, thanks to the Hadza in Tanzania, which is basically uh, somewhere on the African continent. So according to the uh, native, uh, yeah, citizen of the particular spot. So this is pretty much the quickest way possible for you to get such a good bed of coals to cook with. And um, 
So next up, okay. So let's begin with the most basic form of starting a fire, which is the hand drill. So this is basically where the saying, you know, rubbing two sticks or woods perhaps together, create a fire. And as you can see, this guy, he's got a, he's spinning uh, a stick or uh, this particular moment, we'll call it a spindle, you know, he's, he's spinning a spindle and he's asserting the pressure downwards to this, uh, we will call it a hearth board, also made out of another piece of wood. And so, yeah, if you manage to do it the right way, definitely gonna have to learn it first, then you'll be able to, you know, definitely make a fire. So, yeah, next up, uh, you know, remember I said there are two common ways to make a fire. So right now we got the bow drill fire. So bow drill, if I could put it in the uh, pretty much some of the simplest way possible is that a bow drill is some sort of a hand drill on steroids. Now, in case you're asking, so what is steroids? Now, perhaps, I don't know, your brother or your Father, perhaps you yours, I mean, among boys, especially, you know, some of us are so into this uh, whole, you know, bodybuilding and sculpturing, chiseling your uh, muscles and stuff. And so there's been this alternative, which is basically by the usage of a drug uh, referred to as steroids, which somehow help to uh, fasten the process, you know, make it a lot less time consuming to get the job done. Say if you need like what three or four months to get the job done to be able to bulk up, then by using steroids, you would somehow be able to reduce that period of time to maybe even half of the uh, natural uh, process period would have uh, taken. So yeah, back to making a fire. So. Uh, by this point, I guess you would have understood that making a fire by using this bow drill method would be a lot easier and uh, quicker than uh, the hand drill. So, uh, and why is that so, right? You're asking. So, you see, just as equal as the hand drill fire method, uh, you're going to need a spindle uh, and then a hearth board as well. But, okay, let me just sort of zoom that, bingo. So beautiful, as you can see now, uh, the uh, advantage of a uh, bow drill is that you're gonna use another piece of stick and uh, a string, and you're gonna make a bow with it, you know? And then if you could see on this guy's left hand, he's got this something that he's tapping the spindle with. It's called a, a hand piece or a hand hole. Now, you see, when you're spinning uh, the spindle, if you were um, using the hand drill method, you only have the length of your hand or perhaps your, um, yeah, the length of your hand to spin the spindle until it stops for a moment and then it goes the other way around. And so that pause for that split second allows the system to cool down. So the trick is that if you can somehow, anyhow, is in the distance that you spin that spindle without having to stop and reverse the direction, it's an incredible advantage. So if you take a ball, which is essentially again, a stick with a string on it and wrap it around that spindle, you have the entire length of that string to go in one direction without having to stop and yeah, move in the other direction. So, and yeah. Uh, oh yeah, the other part of the bow drill which provides an advantage is the hand piece or the hand hole. Now, when you have the hand hole or hand piece uh, sits on top of the spindle, it provides this downward pressure. So immediately by adding the bow and also the hand hole, you're increasing the speed. You're increasing um, the amount of rotations before you stop and let it cool down in a reverse direction, and you're increasing the pressure, so it's a lot easier to make that fire, and a lot quicker often to make that fire. So, yeah. Oh, voila. Uh, so, before we wrap up, let me just say, now, even you may never find yourself, you know, stuck in some uh, 
again, survival situation, got lost in the middle of the woods or forest, anything. Uh, let me tell you that learning and practicing these primitive skills is an essential part of um, connecting with your past, with our past as mankind, with our environment, and basically just about everything that it means to be human. So, oh yeah, uh, definitely be sure to check out our uh, social media. Uh, great post, great picture, great uh, posters, everything great. I don't even know what, so <laughs> I'm sorry. So also, uh, I linked up this uh, YouTube video, great one. And you could dive in more into the whole, you know, the hand drill and the bow drill. Like you could actually see how, um, yeah, it has been demonstrated by an expert from uh, a university around the uh, United States. So, um, yep. And that wraps up our, maybe not in that, but a brief warmer coming visit on a, a skill set on making a fire. So thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Saidi Ali, for uh, the hot and heat explanation just now. I bet that we gained so many things from the presentation by Saidi Ali. So let's recap, guys. Okay, so what we learned from uh, his presentation just now is uh, we, we know how to start a fire from scratch. We know how to make a large flame. We know the quickest way to start a fire. And we know lots of uh, drill fire, such as hand drill fire, bow drill fire, and many more. Okay, so again, I repeat, guys. Feel free to ask any question here because we will always be here for you, for you to ask questions and we will uh, answer that. And just cut us for questions or simply ask in the chat box, okay? And by the way, um, Saidi Alif also uh, include the link for the tutorial. So you, you guys can just check on that uh, later. All right, so we will move on to the next uh, one, which is um, Shelter by Aina Shakira. Off you go. Okay, hi. Boleh dengar tak? Hi, boleh, boleh. Boleh. Okay, terima kasih dekat akak Sarah kita yang comel hari ni. <laughs> okay, so... Assalamualaikum dan selamat sejahtera kepada adik-adik kita hari ni. Okay, uh, nama akak ialah Aina Shakira. Korang just boleh panggil akak, akak Aina. Okay, hari ni uh, akak akan ajar korang tentang shelter ataupun tempat perlindungan bila kita camping dalam hutan. Okay, sekejap eh. Okay, korang boleh nampak slide tak? Nampak. Boleh. Okay. Okay, so hari ni korang akan belajar uh, tentang shelter. Okay, ataupun tempat perlindungan. Okay, so apa yang kita tahu shelter ni banyak sangat jenis shelter. So, antara dua shelter ialah top 10 dengan dom 10. Okay, top 10 ni Kalau korang boleh tengok kat sini, gambar dia macam senang je nak pasang kan. Tapi sebenarnya susah sikit. Uh, tapi dia tak perlukan banyak barang pun macam dom ten ni. Dom ten ni pula uh, shelter yang biasa orang guna bila camping. Uh, tapi ni pun senang juga nak pasang. Okay, so yang next. Okay, ni untuk top ten. Okay, uh, barang yang kita perlukan untuk buat top ten ni ada empat. Okay, first, heavy duty rope. Okay, and then second, uh, tarp. Tarp ni jenis macam uh, material yang kita nak buat tarp tent tu lah. Stakes ni pula uh, kayu ataupun benda tajam untuk kita cucuk dekat each corner dekat tarp tent tu. Okay, and then batu. Okay, 
Okay, next. Okay. Locate a good place for your tent. Okay, first maksudnya kita kena cari kawasan yang uh, sesuai lah untuk kita buat top tent kita. Okay, find a location near two trees that are close enough to tie your rope between between but far enough to fit your tops. You want to make sure you build your tent at a lower elevation. An elevation that is too high becomes extremely cold during the evening. Okay, kat sini maksudnya uh, bila kita dah cari satu tempat yang sesuai tu, make sure uh, kita dekat dengan dua pokok yang besar lah untuk kita ikatkan top tent kita tu. Okay, so if the weather calls for rain, avoid building your tent in a steep valley that will collect water. Avoid building your, your tent directly beneath dead or weak branches that look like they could fall in a storm. Okay, so maksudnya kalau um, kita masa kita nak buat uh, top tent tu, kalau kita tengok cuaca macam nak hujan and then tempat kita tu pun macam curam kita better jauhkan lah. Ha, kita kita tak nak ada apa-apa ni kan. Okay, so nombor tiga, make sure the ground is slightly damp. This will prevent dust from blowing around when you are trying to make a tent and build a shelter. Okay, tak apa kalau korang tak faham nanti, nanti akak akan bagi link YouTube untuk korang tengok tutorial buat top tent ni, okay. So, nombor empat, Use the heavy duty rope you brought with you and tie it between the trees. Okay. Make sure to wrap it around a few times before tying the knot. Take the other end of the rope and tie it to the other tree. Make sure you tie the rope high enough so that your tie your tent won't be too cramped. Okay, so dekat sini dia bagi tahu um, kita kena uh, ambil tali kita tadi tu, kita tap uh, yang Penting tali tu kena kuat. Tali tu tak boleh lah bawa tali rafia ke apa kan. Kena bawa tali yang kuat. Untuk support kita punya top 10. Okay, next. Place one of your large tops on the ground. Maksudnya, okay, tadi dekat sini kan. Uh, kan ada tapak dia. Okay, first kita bentangkan dia. Smooth it out and remove all of the wrinkles. It should be directly beneath the rope. You, you've hung between the trees. Try to place it so that it's centered beneath the rope above it. Okay. So number one, secure the top. If your top has holes for stacks in its corners, you can use stacks to secure it to the ground. Place a stack through one of the holes and use either a heavy rock or a hammer to hammer it into the ground. Okay. So, fungsi stacks kita ni untuk kita, okay, contohnya kan, uh, kalau before kita pergi camping tu, mestilah kita kena buat planning dulu kan. So, bila kita dah beli barang-barang ni semua, certain tub ni, yang ni, ni, certain tub ni, uh, dia ada lubang dekat uh, bucu dia. So, senang untuk kita cucukkan dia dengan guna stacks tu. So, stack ni, uh, function dia untuk kita tegangkan uh, kita punya tub. Okay. So, next, hang the second tub. Throw your Throw your other top over the rope. You tie in between the trees. Straighten it out so that the top hangs evenly down. If the top barely reaches the ground or doesn't even touch it, you've tied your rope too high. Okay, so uh, akak rasa benda ni senang je. Korang boleh bayangkan uh, macam mana kita nak buat top 10 ni kan. Dia macam senang je. So, bila kita dah bentangkan uh, top dekat, dekat bawah ni, dekat tanah, so kita cucukkan dia guna stacks kita kan. Lepas tu ambil tab yang uh, another tab tu yang second dia tu. Kita just gantung dekat atas tali yang kita dah ikat dekat dua pokok tu. Ha. Okay next. Okay ni rupa tab ten bila dah siap lah. Uh, tapi tab ten ni rasanya boleh muat seorang lah kalau nak selesa. Okay. Untuk sementara boleh lah. Okay, dom ten. Dom ten apa yang kita perlukan ialah ten bag, body of ten, uh, stacks, ten poles, rain fly, ground top. Okay. So, ten bag ni penting sebab benda ni lah yang kita akan bawa kalau kita pergi camping. Dalam tu ada semua kelengkapan untuk buat dom ten ni. 
Okay, body of 10. Kalau tak ada body of 10 ni, macam mana nak buat dom 10 kan? So, benda ni pun penting juga. Yelah, kot-kot. Kalau kita nak pergi camping, kita jumpa pula 10 bag yang dah 10 tahun dekat dalam store rumah tu. Tiba-tiba body, body 10 ni tak mana, tak kita pun tak check, kita main bawa aje. Okay, so before korang pergi camping, kena check ada body of 10. Okay, stacks ni pun biasanya kalau kita beli dom 10 bag ni, dalam tu ada sekali. Ha, so, tak payah risau lah. Uh, stack ni pun function dia sama je macam top 10 tadi dengan 10 poles. 10 poles ni pun sangatlah penting sebab ada sesetengah orang yang nak pergi camping dia main bawa je 10 bag ni yang dah berapa puluh tahun dekat dalam store tu kan. Tapi tiba-tiba bila dah sampai dekat tempat camping tu dia, uh, dia punya 10 poles ni ada yang dah patah-patah, ada yang tak cukup. Uh, so mm, kan dah jadi masalah tu. Okay, so rain fly ni pun penting untuk kita uh, supaya kita boleh uh, protect kita punya kemah tu daripada hujan lebat. Okay, so ground tub ni pun penting juga uh, untuk alas bawah kemah kita tu. Uh, supaya macam uh, kan bawah kemah punya tapak tu kan macam tak tebal sangat kan. So macam nanti bila kita baring sakit badan and then ground tub ni akan bantu kita untuk kurangkan rasa tak selesa tu lah. Okay. So sebelum tu kita kena reserve a campsite. Maksudnya kat sini kita kena buat research pasal tempat yang kita nak camp tu. Okay. So kalau campsite ni korang just boleh google tempat-tempat uh, camping di Malaysia. Uh, so nanti dia akan keluar lah. Okay. So nombor tiga practice setting up the tent before you go for a camp. Okay. Ni pun penting sebab uh, kalau korang tak praktis, dia akan ambil masa yang sangat lama untuk kita pasang tent. Ha. So, tolonglah praktis <laughs> before korang pergi camp. Okay. Okay, next. Okay, ni step dia. Ada sembilan step je. Okay, nombor satu. Lay out the ground top of footprint with the shiny side. Okay, ni nanti lepas ni. Uh, akak bagi link juga link YouTube so nanti korang boleh tengok eh senang gila. Okay, nombor 2 lay the body of the tent on top of the ground top. Okay, nombor 3 assemble your tent pole. Okay, maksudnya nombor 1 ni tadi uh, yang ground top ni yang ni kita akan bentangkan dulu dekat tapak uh, tapak yang kita nak build up kita punya dom tent kan. Okay, kita bentangkan dulu. Uh, and then, nombor dua, lay the body of the tent on top of the ground top. Okay. Ambil yang body ni, kita uh, baring, kita letak atas ground top tu. Letak letak macam tu je. Okay. Tapi make sure before letak tu, kita kena make sure lah kita punya pintu tu arah mana. Uh, janganlah buka-buka uh, pintu tu arah pokok. Eh. So, that korang bangun pagi je, uh, nampak pokok eh. kan macam... Hmm. Kita cantik sikit kan. And then nombor tiga, assemble your tent poles. Okay, assemble your tent poles ni maksudnya kan bila korang dah letak body tent tu, korang just uh, ambil tent poles tu, korang uh, just letak je dulu, buat macam X. Maksudnya satu tent poles tu letak macam ni, satu tent poles lagi letak macam ni. Just letak macam tu. Okay. Nombor empat, attach the poles to the body of tent. Okay, nombor lima, put the tent poles into the ground mat. Nombor enam, Put the rain fly on top of the tent. So maksudnya dekat sini. Uh, 1 sampai 7 ni. Kita just uh, macam. Kita just letak je semua barang-barang tu macam. Uh, maksudnya kita tak payah cucuk dulu. Just letak je. Uh, okay. So nombor 8 barulah kita stack your tent. Stack your tent maksudnya ambil uh, yang kita punya. Stacks ni. Barulah kita cucuk dekat each corner. Okay, nombor sembilan, tighten your rain fly for corners of the tent. Okay, rain fly ni, yang ni, last ni kita kena, bila kita dah buat uh, kita punya dom tent tu, kita kena tegangkan dia. Uh, tak bolehlah melendut je kan. So, tak kalau melendut apa function kita letak rain fly ni kan. Okay, so bila dah pasang dia akan jadi macam ni lah. Uh, so, satu part yang penting dekat dom tent ni ialah vestibule. Okay, what is vestibule? Okay, vestibule is the gap between rain fly and your tent. 
Okay, vestibule also is a gap or great place to put your dirty shoes and to, to keep your shoes dry. Okay, vestibule ni, uh, okay, macam depan korang punya, uh, dekat bagi pintu, dekat body tent tu. Okay, and then nanti kan kita letak um, rain fly kan dekat depan pintu tu. So, kan dia, dia jadi macam, macam satu porch kecil lah macam tu. Ha, ada ruang kat sini kan. Ada ruang. Inilah namanya vestibule. Vestibule ni function dia untuk kita boleh letak kasut kita. So that kita tak payahlah nak bawa masuk kasut. Takkanlah korang nak tidur dengan bau kasut korang kan. So boleh letak dekat luar. And then barang-barang yang uh, patut kita letak kat luar, kita boleh je letak kat luar. Okay. Yang penting kasut lah. Sebab korang pergi camping takkan nak bawa kasut masuk kan dengan berlumpur lagi. So better letak kat luar. Okay, itu function vestibule, okay. So, ini ialah YouTube link. YouTube link, uh, first ni link untuk top 10. Yang second ni link untuk dom 10. So, korang just boleh klik link uh, link ni nanti akan, akan share dekat chat box. Okay, korang just uh, save dulu ataupun kemudian boleh tengok. Uh, okay, nanti korang tengok, okay. Senang je. Okay, so... Kita dah sampai dekat penghujung uh, slide kita. Okay, so ni link Facebook untuk uh, kita orang punya uh, UPM Adventure. Korang kalau nak tengok apa-apa info, just click link FB ni. Sama juga dengan uh, Instagram ni. Just click uh, ni link Instagram ni nanti korang boleh tengok macam-macam info dekat sana. Kalau nak tanya apa-apa ke, just tanya dekat DM. DM IG ni ataupun just boleh tanya dekat FB juga. And kalau nak tanya sekarang, uh, boleh un unmute mic korang. Ataupun kalau rasa malu sangat-sangat nak tanya ke apa, just uh, boleh type dekat chat box tu. Nanti akak akan jawab uh, soalan korang. Okay. Okay, korang kena... Lagi satu, uh, bila setiap slide yang kita orang ajar, korang kena fokus betul-betul tau. Sebab nanti kejap lagi kita akan main game. Ma, game tu, hmm, kita orang nak test korang punya fokus. Ha, so, kena beri perhatian sikit lah. Kalau ha, masa kita orang tengah ajar tu. Ha, okay. So, itu je daripada Akak Aina. Okay. So, sekarang Akak akan pas dekat Akak Sarah. Okay, terima kasih. Okay, thank you so much to Aina Shakira. Akak Aina Shakira for okay, the beautiful guys. slide and amazing explanation just now. So she even explained step by step, okay, to build the uh, tent. So I hope that y'all can gain some input there to apply in your daily lives. So let's recap. Uh, we have learned the type of tent, how to build a tent, things to bring uh, for building a tent and vestibule. Okay, yes, vestibule. Okay, and... She uh she already uh prepared a link for you guys to explore more about what she have explained just now. For those yang kurang faham ke apa ke, you guys can just check out the link yang akak Aina kita bagi. <laughs> so guys, we almost uh, reached at the end of the slot. So hold on there. Uh, I hope that you guys uh, still stay awake and stay energetic. Um, because we have something exciting is waiting for you guys, which is we will play some games that were conducted by Chun Kiat. So please wake up, stay energetic and collect as many marks as you can to win. Okay, so I will pass the session to uh, Chun Kiat. Hello. Can everybody hear me? Yes. 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 Okay, now, now it's the game time. So, okay, Um, before we start, I want to ask because my game is designed for like 8 to 10 people. So, who want to play the game now? The game actually will be going down in Discord, right? Oh, so we should move to Discord now? Uh, um, for the actual uh, game? 
Yes, uh, for the Kita nak main kahut dulu. Okay. Uh, uh, I, uh, I rasa kita stick untuk yang ACO program punya dulu. Kalau ACO program, kita pergi dekat Discord, right? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Okay, so Kakak pergi dekat di so pergi dekat Discord yang uh, um, dia orang bagi dekat link. Uh, Riha dengan uh, Aish dengan Farhana. Uh, ni link Google Meet eh. Um, okay, okay. Um, sebelum itu ya. Um, anda bak nak test kahut dulu dulu tak sebab uh, kahut perlu guna Google Meet kan? Uh, betul. Kena share screen kan kahut? Yes, yes. Uh, ya, yeah. sebab, sebab tak perlu macam pergi Discord dan datang balik. Ya, yeah, terus uh, sekaligus, okay? Okay. So, nak mula sekarang? Ya, yeah, mula sekarang. Hmm. Okay, so uh, terima kasih kepada Kak, Kak Sarah. So, tadi semua dah dengar kan apa yang akak-akak dengan abang tadi ajar dan explain tentang uh, food, water, shelter dengan yeah. fire. Dah. So sekarang uh, akak ada buat game, uh, kahut game. So nak test lah korang faham ke tak faham ke. Okay. So sekarang akak perlukan awak ambil awak punya phone, uh, buka Google dan type kahut it. Sekejap eh. Dia akak bagi kod dekat chat box. Sekejap ni macam ni nak share screen ni. Guys. Tekan present now. Yang entire screen ke a window ke a tab? Uh, win window, window. Window. Nak entire screen pun boleh. Alright. So boleh nampak tak? Nampak, nampak. Nampak. Okay, so, sekarang uh, buka buka Google dekat phone. Type ni, kahut it. Dan masukkan uh, pin number, uh, pin ni. Tapi uh, akan nak awak semua masuk guna real name lah. Supaya senang kita orang nak uh, ambil awak punya markah. Okay. Okay, Kak Ana. <laughs> So, tadi macam mana semua faham ke? Faham. Uh, Tiga soalan. Uh, <laughs> untuk satu topik tu kita ada tiga soalan. Soalan dia simple je. Apa yang akak-akak dengan abang tadi dah cakap, ah uh, itulah soalan dia. Okay, so kita dah boleh mula ke? Uh, boleh, Oh, bagus. Empat ya. Okay. So kalau korang tak faham ke, nak tanya ke, still boleh tanyalah dekat chat box eh. Um, Anaba, yeah? boleh cuba share, share sound tak? Share sound? Uh. Dengar tak? Macam mana eh? Tak dengar. Um, uh, tak apa lah, tak apa lah. Just teruskan. I think you can unmute your mic. Unmute mic? Memang unmute pun. 
เอ่อตาเปิดเออคาร์ลน่าเชื่อสาวคุณคุณเทปเชื่อเชื่อเทปบอลบอลเลยโอเค Sekarang dengar tak sound? Sebab saya dengar sound dia. Maybe sebab anak nampak guna earphone. So uh -huh. sound dia dekat earphone je. Sound dia tak masuk dekat tu maybe. So kena buka earphone ke macam mana? Uh, not sure. Cuba Sekejap, lah. Cuba ya. Eh. Uh -huh. Dengar tak? Sekejap sekarang tak ada sound dah. Cuba. Dengar tak? Tak dengar. Mungkin uh, nanti cuba share tab sahaja kan. Tak perlu okay. share screennya. Okay, nak try share sekarang. Nak try guna tab hmm. sekarang. Hmm. Stop share hmm. dah. Share tab. Nampak? Nampak? Ini tak? Hmm, tak? Tak ada lagi uh, Belum ni Aku just nak tanya soal like, kita orang keluar dulu lah, masuk balik eh apa kahwin ni? Ya. Ah boleh terus sambung je. Ini, oh okey baik baik. Salah salah tak salah tak. Nampak tak yang ni? Yang korang nampak apa? Eh? Nampak. Nampak kahwin seluruh masuk group tu. Oh bukan yang which of the following tu eh? Ah bukan. Ya. Kan. Ini sabar-sabar ya. Ini stres ni. Okay. Nampak ni kan yang which of the following? Nampak. Nampak, nampak. Right. So nanti ambil yang tab lah. Okay. Cuba eh. Dengar tak sound dia? Dengar. 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 Alright. Good. Wah, wow, Kak Sarah eh. <laughs>
Okay, last question. Wah, wah, akak Ina nombor satu. Baik, nanti akak akan ambil markah lah. Boleh tambah dekat awak punya group. So, sekarang ni kita pas balik kat akak Sarah untuk kita teruskan uh, second game kita. So, thank you. Okay, thank you uh, to Aka Anawa for the exciting games just now. We, we play Kahoot just now. So I hope that you guys can gain a lot of knowledge from her, from the game, and can gain something new. All right, so we can move on to the next game. will be conducted by Sun Kiat. Hello. So now we can move to Discord. Okay, so we just leave the meeting and then go to the Discord uh, voice, voice channel, okay? Goodbye and see you again in five seconds. Bye.